Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and I'm very excited to introduce this series on the D programming language. So welcome to the introduction here. And in this lesson, I just want to go ahead and talk a little bit about what the D programming language is. Some of you might not have even heard of it and are used to this channel showing C and C++ content. So while that's not going to change, I'm going to keep doing C, C++, and other sorts of graphics and all sorts of gaming content. D is a programming language that I want to focus on. And I want to talk a little bit about why, but let me go ahead and focus on the actual language so you learn a little bit about it here. So what is D? Well, from the webpage here on dlang.org, if I zoom in a little bit, D is a general purpose programming language with static typing. It's a systems level access language, and it gives you C-like syntax. That's going to be familiar. With D programming language, you can write fast, uh, read fast, and run fast. So fast code, fast. <laughs> I really like that introduction here, and it gives a nice idea of what the D programming language sort of ethos is about. Now, just as an example here and why some of these things matter. So for example, static typing. Well, this is going to be familiar for folks in C and C++ who come from a statically typed language. That means you have to type what the actual type is, like something's going to be an integer and so on. And this provides various advantages for optimization reasons, and you just know at compile time what a type's going to be. But there are a lot of convenience things like the auto keyword in D, for instance, which allows the compiler at compile time to deduce what the type is. So it knows that this is a string or a array of characters here, for instance. The other interesting things or nice things about D is just how expressive the language is. So that's what it really means about writing fast code. We have nice modern constructs like for each. We have a standard library. We have iterators and ranges and these types of things in the D programming language that allow us to work fast and write clean code. And finally, what I'll say about it here is the language has just had some time to learn from other programming languages. As it's a relatively newer language in the uh, sort of history of programming languages. So I just want to show a few examples where you can kind of see that, like this ability to have modules and sort of import things. Uh, there's no header files in the D language per se here. You can also do interesting things here, like by uh, utilizing what's called a uniform function call syntax, where you can sort of just do you know, dot this, dot this, dot this, and kind of get these clean operations in the language. So I think looking at some of these examples just on the home page are really nice. And other things like concurrency and parallelism were things that were thought about very early on in the language. And again, because historically, how this language has evolved and learned from some of the other previous languages that uh, were developed uh, much earlier, you get some of these nice built-in things like a for each here and just being able to call parallel on it and parallelize this loop essentially and make things quite easy uh, to do here. So looking a little bit about the history, we can go ahead to the wiki page, which does a pretty good job of just talking about D-Lang. And again, giving some description about it being a multi-paradigm language, that means you can do things procedurally, functionally, object-oriented. You choose the right style or approach to solve the problem that you need here. Now, the D programming language is primarily uh, has been created by Walter Bright, but it's had many other fantastic uh, contributors. Andre Alexandrescu, who did some great work on C++, has been one of the major contributors uh, on D. And the rest of the uh, committee that works on the D programming language, which is very active and working very hard to bring uh, modern features and more things as we speak today. So it's a very active language uh, and it is used in industry, which I think is important, which the D homepage uh, emphasizes. I know I've talked with various people at some of these various companies. Uh, you see some of the bigger names there uh, that use the D programming language, especially for writing things like developer tools. There's been professional uh, commercial games written in D. It really is a great language for things like game development, uh, data science applications, building developer tools, and again, just getting things to work. That's why I like the D programming language. So I would encourage you to take a look at this compiled language D here in this series. You can go ahead and read through the wiki if you want to see some of the cool features, some things that it's about. And it's got really good interop with C and C++, which I know I've focused a lot on this channel. So as far as working with or just bringing in C code to the D programming language, that's going to be an option that uh, you have. So depending on what types 
of uh, tools that you're building, this might be something uh, worth exploring. So just really briefly going to the uses on the wiki page, you can again see some of these applications that have been developed for the deep programming language. Uh, and again, I encourage you to investigate those uh, further. There's also professional conferences that are run on the D programming language. So that's something, again, that's always encouraging to see with languages when you want to know that you're going to adopt or invest time into something that's going to um, keep growing or you want to have some confidence that it is. Anyways, I'm excited to bring this series for you on the D programming language. We're going to walk through a lot of the features here, uh, giving you, if you haven't done any D programming, uh, how to get started. And for the most part, if you've done some coding, you should be able to follow along. I'll try to walk you through the examples as I always do uh, in my lessons. So if you want, or if you're already excited, you can go to the downloads page and download any of the D compilers. Again, there's the Digital Mars compiler here, DMD uh, GDC, which is a GCC version. So if you've been using GCC um, and have a relatively recent version that comes with a D front end that you can use and compile code, uh, or if you're coming from more of a Clang background, LDC is the other compiler, and you can use that as well. And this is available on Windows, Linux, and Mac. So again, it's a language that's available, um, and you can distribute your applications that you build on any uh, platform. Um, so there's really no limitations with this language, which I think is really exciting. So folks, with that said, I'm Hope you're really excited for this series. I know I am. It's always fun to uh, learn a new programming language and use the right tool for the right job. So if you want a fast, expressive uh, systems language, this might be the right tool for you. And regardless, learning a new programming language, even if you're coming from, say, some of my previous lessons on C and C++, is often very healthy because you see how things are done in different languages and can sometimes think or uh, approach problems in a different way, which is always valuable. So you should always try to learn maybe one language every uh, year or two. And, uh, you know, it's always a fun exercise. But with that said, we'll start diving into some lessons on setting up the D programming language, learn a little bit more about the history here and begin our journey. All right. Thanks for your time, folks. And comment below for what you're really excited about learning for the D programming language. And I'll look forward to reading your comments there. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss some of these D specific lessons if that's what you're here for. And we'll see you soon.